So this screencast is going to finish off our discussion from a uh, previous class period that we sort of ran out of time for. But we're looking at uh, enzyme regulation in terms of uh, competitive inhibitors, uh, allosteric inhibitors, and then looking at uh, these allosteric activators as well as inhibitors. So if you remember, uh, we had in the upper left corner here had this discussion about how membranes are separating uh, fluids um, from, from one another. So uh, fluid C out here is a solution. Fluid B is a solution. Fluid A is a solution. We talked about how uh, these membranes separate those, those fluids. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, you, we had these membranes within a membrane here it being described as a eukaryotic cell. We took those, uh, those organelles then, as we described them, one could be maybe a nucleus, and one is a mitochondria, and one's a vacuole, a chloroplast, et cetera. And what we see when in, within eukaryotic cells is that this membrane is, of course, isolating and separating any enzymes right, and substrates and products uh, away from the solution that might be on the other side of the membrane. Now, we had a discussion about how those organelles are are uh, places where these very highly ordered series of chemical reactions are happening. So if this is a mitochondrial membrane, then the enzymes involved with respiration are, are associated with, uh, with that mitochondrion, and so on and so forth. So uh, to come to the diagram then, so again, let me back up one second. This is sort of like the big picture uh, on, on the left here as to why enzymes are important, because every single cell Highly, highly ordered series of chemical reactions. All these reactions mediated by an enzyme uh, or catalyzed by, by at least one enzyme. So this understanding of, of, of the structure of the cell uh, basically, um, and, 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 you know, oversimplified, but you have enzymes, substrates, products, all compartmentalized uh, away from the outside world. The diagram then moving on, is we, we talked about how this was the enzyme, uh, and then here's our substrate, the active site labeled there. We had this other site or this allosteric site, um, and then we put these competitive inhibitors in here, and we said that these competitive inhibitors are going to slow down the rates of the reaction by blocking substrate from binding with the sorry, blocking the substrate from binding to the active site, which is then going to lead to fewer products per unit time. The definition of uh, slower reactive reaction rate. We also have these non-competitive inhibitors that are going to bind to allosteric sites here that are also going to slow that are also going to slow down rates of reaction. When these allosteric inhibitors bind to the allosteric site, they change the conformation of that active site so that the substrate is no longer able to have this induced fit with be, with the enzyme, and you're not going to make as many products per unit time. So this is where we left off. Uh, I'll put these two animations on Blackboard uh, underneath the, the, the screencast if you want to take a look at them. So as an example of this competitive in inhibition, this slide is ridiculously complex here. But I want to just show you a few things. That uh, Let's start in the upper left here. This acetyl coenzyme A thing is a substrate. And this thing in blue here is an enzyme. And that makes this acetyl, acetyl, uh, acetyl acetyl coenzyme A then the product. So substrate enzyme product. Right? And then look, this product becomes a substrate for another enzyme right here that then makes another product. This product right, becomes the substrate for this enzyme right here, which then makes this product. And this theme, this pattern continues to follow all the way through, right? This product becomes a substrate for this enzyme, which catalyzes this reaction to make this product, and so on and so forth. Well, this example, this very complex example, one, I don't expect you to memorize any of this, so please don't go getting all freaked out that you have to memorize all the details of this example. Number two, we're going to want to show you this because this is the pathway by which some liver cells are making cholesterol. Right? So this is a very highly ordered series of reactions that leads ultimately to the production of cholesterol. Well, if you have high cholesterol, one drug that you might be taking is something called a statin. Right? And statins are a class of drugs which help to lower blood cholesterol levels. Right? The question then is, well, how does that happen? Right? Well, it happens because, in this example, lovostatin, here's lovostatin in the upper 
right corner here, this is the very complex structure of lovostatin. Again, don't memorize it, just understand it. This is the molecular structure of lovostatin. It's an example of one. It is found in a mushroom, Aspergillus terius, and we isolate that. And here's the big deal right here is that this lovostatin actually is a competitive inhibitor of HMG coenzyme, coenzyme A, which happens to be this substrate up here. So this lovostatin is a competitive inhibitor of this substrate up here for this enzyme. Well, if that's the case, then it's going to outcompete this lovostatin outcompetes uh, HMG coenzyme A, and it's then going to slow the rate of reaction. It's going to slow this reaction right here. Well, if I slow this reaction down right up here, then I make less of this, I make less of this, and all the way down the line here, it ends up me making less and less cholesterol. So less cholesterol is produced then by, by the liver. This is an example of how drugs, medications, one way that some drugs and medications work. So understanding how enzymes are functioning in cells, understanding the basics of, uh, of that is important and can be important. So uh, moving on to allosteric activators and inhibitors affecting enzyme activity. So this gets a little bit more complicated, um, not much, but just a little bit, where some enzymes have an active form and they have this inactive form. And the enzymes oscillate back and forth between an active form and an inactive form. So you have inactive conformation, active conformation, inactive, active, inactive, active, right? And so the enzymes, as they're made, they're, active, they're actually you know, oscillating back and forth between these two conformations. Right? Now, if we go and pause this for a second, the active form, we are calling this the allosteric site in here, and then this is the active site right here. I know that because they labeled it for me. So if this is the active site, this enzyme can actually take care of one, two, three, four substrates all at the same time. So in the active form, it's going to be like this, but in the inactive form, I'm not able to catalyze any sort of reaction over here, right? See, the active sites, their shape has been changed. So in this case, this is going, if, if the enzyme is in this form, my rate of reaction is going to be actually sped up, and if it's in the inactive form, then my rate of reaction is actually slowed down or deterred a little bit. Well, if we put in to the solution, if we put in things called activators, right? They are going to bind to, not the active site, but they bind to the allosteric site. They bind to the allosteric site and hold or stabilize the enzyme in this active conformation. Well, an activator holds this enzyme in the active conformation. And by holding it in the active conformation, we are able to greatly increase the rate of the reaction. So this is another way that cells can affect rates of reaction is by producing and bringing in activators, etc. Along those same lines, you have inhibitors, right, which will also bind to, that also can bind to the allosteric site. Again, not the active site, but binding to the allosteric site. And this helps to stabilize the enzyme uh, in an inactive conformation and will greatly reduce Oops. greatly reduce the rates of reaction. So again, using allosteric activators and inhibitors can also affect the enzyme's activity. Of course, affect is not enough. You need to then describe that affect. So the, the, the effect of, uh, the e effect of having an activator is that the enzyme rates are sped up. Effect of having inhibitors is that the enzyme rates are slowed down. Another, uh, another factor involved with enzyme activity is having cofactors and coenzymes. You may have re read about these, but cofactors and coenzymes uh, aid in the induced fit. So these cofactors generally are inorganic molecules, and in coenzymes tend to be organic by definition. So that's the difference between a cofactor and a coenzyme is that cofactors tend to be inorganic, like things like metals, uh, magnesium, right, et cetera. Coenzymes tend to be an organic molecule. And, but what do they do? They help, they aid in the induced fit. 
So if I look at my enzyme here, uh, here's my enzyme, here's the active site. Here's my substrate going to bind to that active site. Right? And you form this, uh, this enzyme substrate complex, and then the products released in your enzyme comes back out again. Well, in, to engage this, to, to aid in induced fit, obviously these cofactors and coenzymes are going to do what to the rate of the reaction? Pausing for you to answer. Uh, if they aid in induced fit, then they're probably going to uh, greatly increase the rate of the reaction. Right? But not by not how activators are doing it, but but instead binding at the uh, at the active site or part of that active site. So if we look down at the uh, diagram at the bottom here, again, here's my enzyme, here's the active site. Right? What we have is that in, in this image here, we have the coenzyme fitting into part of that active site. And when that does this, when, when the coenzyme fits in with the active site, this in some way is going to, we say, increase the affinity, increase the affinity of uh, the active site for the substrate. A fancy way of saying that the substrate binds better. The, the substrate is going to bind uh, more readily, it's going to bind faster, better, uh, the, therefore leading to greater rates of, in, of, of induced fit, therefore leading to greater rates of product production per unit time, again defined as rate. So this coenzyme here acting as not so much an allosteric activator, but as a, and again, not competitive activator, but it would be similar to the, um, the opposite of the competitive inhibitor. Because it's binding to, it being the coenzyme is binding to the active site and helps get that substrate bound there more, more readily. Again, just another image from another text about, uh, about this. Again, now we're seeing this cofactor uh, up here. Again, here's the enzyme. Here's the cofactor. Uh, and this would be some sort of inorganic molecule, right? Example, like magnesium ions, right? Uh, some iron works like this okay um, so don't worry about this ap apo enzyme and coenzyme and everything like that so this catalytic site here well here they're, they're adding a, this coenzyme which would be an organic molecule there and, and again this is all going to increase the affinity of this uh, catalytic site or the active site for the substrate okay again that's going to just increase the rates of the reaction. So what you should do now is kind of pause uh, and summarize all of this and look for, uh, see if you can identify and describe similarities and differences between uh, competitive inhibitors, uh, non-competitive inhibitors, uh, and look for uh, allosteric activators, inhibitors, and as well as coenzymes and cofactors. So how, what is the relationship between all of these terms? How are they similar to one another? How are they different from one another? And if there are questions about that, bring them to class and we can talk. All right. Hope that was a little helpful. Oh, one more thing. I forgot about these guys. Hanging out at the end there, uh, we talked about enzyme concentration and substrate concentration, how that would affect this curve, and then describing what's going on there. Look, now down here we have competitive, there's one for competitive inhibitor, allosteric, non-competitive inhibitor, allosteric activators. And you could throw in here coenzyme uh, and cofactors. Coenzyme cofactors, right? So uh, if I bring those up, bring those down, the concentration of them, right? what is that going to do to uh, this curve right? on there? And then a little spot for you to describe. Okay. See you in class.